worthy to be praised, worthy to be worshipped. There is none that's like unto our God. Father, we lift up our voice. We give thanks. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for this seminar, this conference. We believe you, Lord, for a transformation, a transformation through the word. And that your word will have an impact in our lives, impact in your church, impact in our community. And we thank you, Lord. We say to you alone be the glory and honor and power. To you alone be the glory and honor and power. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that this program will minister grace unto you. I pray it will bring a transformation in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I believe God with you that this weekend we bring a turn around in your life. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us take our seats in God's presence, people of God. I want to welcome everybody, those online, wherever you are, watching from, connected from, a very special welcome to you. And I want to believe God that this seminar on timing, timing is everything that it will, have, it will bring a change in your life. It will bring a revolution in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Timing is everything. There are many of you, even those online, they may wonder and say, well, I am always on time. I don't go late. I'm always on time. This seminar is beyond being on time. Praise the Lord. Your dreams, your goals, they are vital for your success. Praise the Lord. But they will never yield the desired result except if you attach time to them. Your dreams and your goals, they are vital for your success. They are vital. They are important. But they, never, they will never yield any success. They will never come to pass until you place them in time. Amen? Amen. It means that time becomes the governing thing concerning your dreams, concerning your goals. Amen. Amen. Time is a ruler in each person's life. You may not know it, but that is what it is. Time is what? And unfortunately, time has not ruled well in Africa. And that is why they give the popular African time. They give it. Timing is about being in the right place, the right time, with the right plan. Did you just get what I just said? Amen? Timing is about what? Being in the right place at the right time with what? With the right plan. But we talk about being at the right place at the right time most often. We talk so much about right place, right time. Right place, right time. You can be at the right place at the right time with the wrong plan, with the wrong idea. So you understand that when you walk with time, you need to follow the word of God. You need to understand the place of the word of God. There is time for everything. Everything. There is a fixed time. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. 
everything. There is a supposing you are to miss your fixed time. And a time for every business under the sun. There is a time for every business under the sun. And so, if you miss out your timing, you will miss out your progress. Praise the Lord. Many people have missed their timing. Many people have missed their progress as a result of timing. Many people have lost their businesses because of timing. Their businesses. Their businesses messed up because of timing. Amen? I remember many years ago, many years ago, um, my uncle gave a contract to mommy. She was given a contract to do, um, I think it was a conference room, right? To build a conference room, the chairs and the table. And this was many years ago, and it was a good contract, beautiful contract. Of course, she's not a carpenter. She's not a furniture maker. But the contract was given to her. So, she, she knows furniture guy, you know, that she used to work with. And so, as the contract was given to her, now she went to this guy. This guy is good with a job. Very good with a job. And so, she gave him the job. And the guy started the work. I can't remember the exact time when they were supposed to deliver. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And the project started. And it didn't take time. The, the carpenter decided to be funny. He was not showing up. And she had a particular time to deliver the project. And because she's not a carpenter, she became very worried. And so she would leave sometimes five o'clock in the morning to go to the house of the carpenter. And they would say the carpenter just left. <laughs> and sometimes she would leave 10 p.m. to the house of the carpenter. Amen. And my uncle was calling. Actually, the son was calling. When is she going to deliver? When is she going to de deliver? The man knows the job. But he didn't have the discipline of time. And so they struggled with the project. Struggled, struggled, struggled. That project took something out of her. Because she would jump or cut her, jump everything to pursue the carpenter. And then eventually they were able to deliver the project with all manner of problems. So, after they delivered, my uncle, funny enough, liked the project. Amen? And they wanted to give her another. She said, no, I don't want <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, they thought that she would jump at it. Are you hearing me? Now, now, when that project comes, she was thinking about the possibility of setting up a company that provides this type of thing. And I gave her my support. But the money was not a problem. Money was not a problem. But the guy just didn't show up to work. At the back here where we are working, we have had a bit of that. Even some of them Christians. Amen? That engineer, Fela, survived the month of December is a miracle. Tylers don't show up. Carpenters don't show up. Everybody, money was not a problem. But to do the work was a problem. They will collect jobs from three people. And while they are doing your work, you will hear the other person calling them. I think Engineer Fela had one saying, I will bring police and carry you. And he was telling the man, I will be in your place tomorrow. Meanwhile, he has not finished our work today. Praise the Lord. So you see that the reason why we are here is not only spiritual. Actually, this is more business seminar than spiritual. Because if the time work in your business, it will work in the spirit for you. 
You know why? You need your business to survive. And so if you can set your heart right with timing in your business, it will be very easy for you to walk it in the spirit realm. And that's why I said that your dreams and your goal, they are critical to your success. But if time is not in it, it will not work for you. Have you seen illiterate parents, illiterate parents, have you seen them give birth to doctors and engineers? Hello? You have not seen them. You've not seen people that go to, didn't go to school and they say they are going to give birth to a doctor and, or an engineer. Amen? They made that their dream, their goal. They said, I may not have gone to school, but my children, one will be a doctor, one will be an engineer. And they set a time. Is there anybody that is born as a doctor? Is there anybody that is born as an engineer? And what happens? They set it as their goal. They say, we are going to produce doctors and engineers. We didn't go to school. They start playing with the idea, mama doctor, mama engineer. Have you heard such a thing? The vision is for an appointed time. Engineers are not born overnight. Doctors are not born overnight. And yet, they will wait. The child is born, male or female, they don't care. The child goes to school. They put the child to the best school they can afford. They put it into the head of the child. You are to be a doctor. You will be an engineer. Faith comes by hearing. And as the child hears it continuously, the child walks away to become engineer. As I was meditating upon that, and I said, Lord, it's really amazing what you do in the life of people. And the Lord said to me, do you know, in my church, in the same way, anybody can produce a doctor, anybody can produce an engineer. I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Just today. The Lord began to tell me, he said, look, if illiterates can produce engineer, which they do, he said, in very much the same way, my children in evangelism, in evangelism, they can give birth to doctors. They can give back to engineers. I never thought about it like that. But the Lord said, there is something. There is a problem. When we said, this is a time for evangelism. Amen? Amen? Look at, let me use women, because this is more apparent with women. A woman wants to marry a good-looking guy, Right? An educated person, right? And a successful person, right? Praise the Lord. That is her goal. That's what she wants. You send the same woman to go and evangelize. Where will she go? She go to evangelize to the beggars. To the malams. To all the unemployed people. But she wants to marry a doctor, an engineer. But in evangelism, she goes to win unemployed, malams, beggars, get men, gatekeepers, market women, market men, vulcanizers. And so when they come to church, she invited them. And then when they come and propose to her, she will refuse. Are you hearing me? Am I communicating to? And then they say, their type is not in the church. Who brought those in the church? Who brought those in the church? Who brought them? No, who brought them? And so you say, my type is not in this church. And then they go to look for another type outside. Who brought the type here? You did. Amen. And so, they don't say, the woman don't say, the ladies don't say, the girl does not say, I will bring doctors to the church. I will bring engineers to the church. So, forget that we go for evangelism as a group and as a team. Monday evening, Tuesday evening, you dress up the way you like to be addressed. 
You go to the general hospital where there are doctors and nurses. You go there to evangelize. Are you hearing me? You go to companies where you get engineers. You dress nice. You pray well. And then, you, you know, when you want to talk to doctors and engineers, you must be, you must be well prepared with your scriptures. You have set a vision. You have set a goal. And then somebody sees you going out in the evening. Where are you going? He said, I'm going for evangelism. The way you are looking, he said, yes. Because I know what I'm expecting. Praise the Lord. And the Lord said to me, the same way illiterate parents can give birth to doctors and engineers. He said, the same way in my family, in the house of God, anybody can give birth to an engineer. Anybody can give birth to a doctor. You know why? Jesus said, go ye into all the world and make disciples. Make disciples of all nations. Praise the Lord. So, you set a time. You said, this year, I will bring forth three types of people, four types of people in the house of God. I am going to minister to them. I'm going to pray for them. Of course, it is easier to bring beggars than to bring uh, certain type of people. Because some you need to pray more for them to come to church. Some you need to pay for them to come to church. One you pray, one you pay. Shout hallelujah. Say time and my goal. They are essential in what I want to be in life. God says something in Genesis. He says, seed time and harvest. Is that correct? He says, why the earth remain? Seed time and harvest. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. God says so. Why the earth remains? Why the earth remains? Seed time. Harvest. Harvest shall not cease. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 3 said that there is a time to plant. A time to do what? A time to plant and then a time to do what? To pluck up what was planted. There is a time for you to plant. There is a time for you to uproot or to harvest. There is a time. The Bible said there is a fixed time for every business. And so if there is a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, what does that mean? What if you did not plant? What if you did not plant? And God said as the earth remains, as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Looking through the scripture, you will find out that the planting season is a essential season. It's a critical season in the life of everybody. Planting season is not a time or a season for waste. Amen. You can only waste time to your detriment. When you waste your time, when you waste your health, you are wasting the raw materials for success. You don't know it. Your health and your time, they are life's raw materials for success. And so what you do with it will determine what you will become. What you do with it there are people, their life is full of regret because when they were healthy and they had time, they didn't invest it well. And suddenly, they got afflicted. And so, they couldn't go where they used to be. And they would say, if only I had known. If only I had known. 
time is something that science have never learned how to increase. Nobody can increase more than 24 hours. Nobody can increase more than 60 seconds. Nobody can increase more than the hours you have in a day. Nobody can give you more time. Only you can create more time. Only you can maximize the time you have. Only you can adjust your life with time. Only you. Seed time. Seed time. Seed time is the most important time in your life. It's the most important time. Do you know why? Because the seed determines the harvest. If you fail to plant, if you fail to sow seed, ah, uh, you will reap poverty. Professor Adeshina, the president of African Development Bank, he says something just a few weeks ago. He said, what Africa needs, Africa needs to be able to plant seed and get a harvest. That was what Professor Adeshina said. He said, until Africa is able to sow seed, Africa will never be developed. And I said to you, until you are able to sow seed, until you are able to plant, because God says seed time and harvest shall never cease. Never cease. Never cease. Seed time. But he didn't say harvest time. He said seed time. So harvest is timeless. Harvest can be any day. Harvest you know, you know, we are eventually becoming a generation that merchandise everything. Somebody helps you to carry a, a bag, and when he drops it for you, he's waiting. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You say, thank you. God bless you. You say, yes, sir. He's standing there until you pay him for that service. And if you don't pay him, he said, stingy man, wicked people. No feet to drop. He just helped you to carry back. It was an opportunity to sow a seed. But everybody demands cash for everything they do. They demand cash for everything. Even with God, they demand cash. They do things in the house of God. They are looking for payment immediately. Uh, he said, how much is church willing to pay? Praise the Lord. I know, even back in Germany, many people that wanted to come to be in the choir, they were asking for money to be paid to sing, to worship, to praise God. They were asking for money. They wanted to be paid. Instrumentalists wanted to be paid. They said, well, church makes money, so well, there's nothing wrong in me making money. There is everything wrong about it. There's everything wrong about it. Ah, ah, ah. And many of them that I knew that came, and I said to them, I will not pay anybody to sing. I will not pay anybody to worship. I will not pay anybody to praise God. I said, I will not pay. Simple. I will not pay. <clears throat> the moment you are paid to do something for God, it's no longer service. Are you hearing me? And so people have the wrong mentality and the wrong attitude in the house of God. They have it. And so you see the way their life turns out. I agree that there are certain cases you can choose to say you'll be paid for this because you are going to be engaged full time. Praise the Lord. But whereby you volunteer your time maybe once or twice or three times in a, a week for two, three hours, and you want to be paid. And you want to be paid. And when it comes to giving, you don't really give because you say you don't have the money to give. And here you are also, the little you're able to give in terms of service, you are asking to pay for it. That means even if you have, you will not give. Is that not true? Because the one you have, the time you have, you merchandise it. You merchandise it. But there is something about 
timing your service, especially in the house of God, especially with your mentor, that transforms your life. Transform. Elijah served Elijah till the end. And then Elijah said to Elisha, I am about to be taken away from you. But what is it that you need? Elisha said. Elisha said, what I need, what I need is to have a double portion of what is in you. Elijah said, what you have asked for is a hard thing. What you have asked for, if you will see me at the time of my departure, you can have it. Timing becomes essential for the dream of Elisha to receive a double portion. He said, if you see me the time, I am lifted. Do you understand the place of timing? Do you understand that God works with time? Do you understand that God has set a time for everything on earth? There will be a time it will get dark. There will be a time that the morning will break forth. No science can be able to change it. There is raining season. There is dry season. God has set a time for it. Do you think that when it comes to your life, that God has not set a time in place? God sets a time for everything. And that's why I said to you that every problem must expire. There is no problem for a child of God that does not have an expiry date. But do you understand the timing of God? The Bible said the time came when the Israelites were to be delivered. The Bible said a time came when the Israelites were to be delivered. And the Bible said the children of Egypt increased their burden and their yoke and they made their life painful. How is it that a time for them to be delivered was when life was more rigorous and more painful and more sorrowful for them? Because you don't know the time and seasons of God. At the time that the deliverance is near, the enemy will press you to, uh, to discourage you. The enemy will attack you to make you lose faith. Because between your miracle... Between your miracle and your affliction may be just hours, may just be days, may just be weeks. And the Lord has said, in this particular day, you must be set free. And the devil knows it. So what does he do? The Bible said the time came near when the Israelites were to be delivered. And so the Egyptians increased their affliction, increased their pain increase their sorrow. Why? Because their deliverance is near. Because God's word is about to be executed. I don't know somebody. You've been dealing with a situation that is beyond you. And suddenly you are sensing that it's getting worse and worse and worse. Have you understood the time and season that as it's getting worse is because your deliverance is getting closer. Have you understood that if you are faithful to the end, Elijah said to Elisha, if you will see me taken up, you will get what you desire. And yet, the last few days of his service to Elijah, he suffered mockery. They mocked him. They despised him. Ah! They said to him, they laughed at him. Who were those that were mocking him? Unbelievers? No! Who were those that were mocking Elisha? The same sons of the prophets. Amen? A man's enemy of those of what? His household. Who were those that were mocking Elisha? It was not unbelievers. They knew that Elijah was to be taken up. They said, today, your master will be taken away from you. Today, we will see what will become of you. You and your master, you say you will serve him, you will serve him, you serve him. You know, when you serve in the house of God, you are friends who think that you are a fool. And especially about the time your miracle is to be closed, they say, stay there, let them be using you. And your miracle is nearby. They say, oh, you stay there. <laughs> stay now. Stay now. Before you follow them, check their lives. Check the lives of those advising you. Check the lives of those mocking you. 
The Bible says that those that were mocking Elisha, they were sons of the prophets. Some of them were in the mountains. Some of them were by the wayside, but none of them was on the main way. Are you hearing me? They were sons of the prophet, but they were not in the way of the prophet. And so what do you want? The Bible said a time came when Israel was to be delivered. A time came for your deliverance. And the enemy tried to oppress you the more. The affliction increased the more. Look at the life of Job. The Bible said of all that the devil did to Job. Job refused to open his mouth and curse God and mock God. He said, I know that my redeemer liveth. Timing. Timing. When we think about timing, we just think it is about being at the right place at the right time. No, it's more than that. Your vision needs time. Your goals need time. Your expectation needs time. Your service needs time. Everything you do needs time. Say time. Say time. It's essential. In my life. In my life. Time is essential. He says, see time and harvest shall not cease. In Galatians chapter 6, God speaks again to us. He said, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man, a man reaps what he sows. A man reaps what he sows. Praise the Lord. Is that in your Bible? Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man, a man reaps what he sows. If God says that a man reaps what he sows, what if you do not sow? This is the first question we must ask. What if I fail to sow? Some of the biggest problem we have in church is people expecting a harvest they have not sown seed for. That's the challenge. Many people are believing God for this. Many people are expecting God for this. And you ask them, have you sowed the right seed for your harvest, for your desire? They said, what kind of seed? I come to church. I give tithe. I give offering. That thing is not what we are talking about. The Bible says, God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. What if you didn't sow? What if you just come to church and go? You come to church and go. What will you reap? The scriptures cannot be broken. Sometimes we think that the word of God is not true. We are the one that is not true, not the word of God. We are the one that is not true. We are the one that is not living the word. We are the one that don't follow the word. The word is our life. If we don't live it, we will not have anything in our life. He said, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows that he will reap. He went on to give an example. Whoever sows to please the, their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. I wonder how many people that have been sowing to their flesh and therefore reaping destruction. You want to look good. You want to be well dressed. You package yourself well. And that's all you do. You package yourself because you want to be liked by people. You want to be considered fashionable. And so you sow to your flesh. You, you beautify your flesh. You edify your flesh. Everything must be to match to your flesh. What did God say you will reap? Destruction. It's not me. It's the word of God. Where do you sow? You say you are stingy until when it comes to your body. You lavish your body. Solomon wrote, I think in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, he said, everything that my heart desired, I gave to my heart. That's what Solomon said. He said, there was nothing that my heart desired, I kept away from my heart. And so what happened to Solomon in the end? He lost God. He lost God. Even Solomon went about pleasing his flesh with all the wisdom of God in him. Yes. Because Pharaoh is a flesh Walking against the will of God. That's what who is Pharaoh is. And as Pharaoh was in Egypt, so is Pharaoh in your flesh. Nothing. Miracles does not move. 
Miracles did not move Pharaoh to submission. No! He resisted the miracle. He fought the word of God. He fought the miracles of God. He fought signs and wonders. And you come to church. You hear the word of God. The word of God does not move you. He said that is pastor's own that he's talking about. Do you understand what the Bible says? The Bible says whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh we reap what? Destruction. But whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit with what? Reap eternal life. Where are you sowing? Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Sow into your flesh. The Bible says you, didn't, you shouldn't do that. But the Bible tells you what you will reap. Corruption, destruction. And But if you sow to the spirit, what is it to sow to the spirit? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Placing God first in your life. The things of God comes first in your life. Anything to do with the house of God comes first in your life. Even if you were to travel for business, you say, I need to check up. I need to check up if there is any assignment for me in the house of God. You get a job, far away place. He pays, the money is good. You say, no, I can't take the job until I need to talk to my pastor to see if I should take it or not. You get an offer in far away place and you say, I cannot take it. I need to talk. I need to talk to my pastor because I am a committed Christian. I don't just get easily uprooted. I can go until I hear from God. That's what it means sowing into the spirit. Sowing into the spirit. Praise the Lord. There are people that have sent their children to Europe to school, to America to school. They lost their faith. It would have been better they stay in Nigeria. Whatever that will make you lose your faith, don't take it. There are people that went to Europe. They used to be strong Christians here. When they got to Europe, their Christianity became weakened. Became lukewarm. What is important to you? To please your flesh or to please the spirit? But the Bible tells us the reward depending on where you sow. If you sow to the flesh, ah, what will you get? Destruction. If you sow to the spirit, what would you get? Eternal life. Verse 9. Everybody read verse 9 together. Okay, you read in Jesus and praise the Lord. He said, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, shout hallelujah. At the what? Proper time. But he said, let us not be weary in doing what is right. You know why? God's plan will take its time, but it will come to pass. God does not do abracadabra. God does not have microwave. Hello? Praise the Lord. Has science been able to shrink nine months to five months to give birth? Why now? No, why now? <laughs> Is it not too long? They, they say science, technology, right? Have they been able to reduce nine months to five months? <laughs> Have you realized that the time of life that God said, science has never been able to alter it. Has science been able to create human beings with six fingers instead of five to make them more efficient? The more, the better. Six, six fingers, seven, seven fingers, seven toes. Have they been able to do that? Two, yeah, two heads are better than one. So science created a human being with two heads. Praise the Lord. Hello? Cars have four tires, so they created human beings with four legs so that they can run faster. Will you marry such? He said, my husband can do 24 hour, 48 hours job in 24 hours because he has four hands, four legs. Praise the Lord. God's standard is eternal. God's standard is what? Eternal. And that is why the Bible says, whatever the Lord doeth shall be permanent. If God bless you, it's permanent. If God breathed life into you, it's permanent. Whatever that God gives to you is permanent. Amen. 
Are you hearing me? And so that which is from above is above all. It's above all. Timing. He said, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. He didn't say we will reap a harvest and stop. He says harvest only comes if you don't give up. Like Elisha, if you follow to the end. If you follow to the end. And the Bible says something in verse 10 that keeps me thinking. Therefore, as we have opportunity, comma. Is that in your Bible? I want you to underline that where it says, therefore, as we have opportunity, as we have opportunity, as we have opportunity, therefore, as we have opportunity, when do we have opportunity? When do we have opportunity? When do we have opportunity? When? When Archbishop Ben Snederhoser passed away, we went for the burial in Benin. Praise the Lord. Men of God from all over the world came. And then at the end, when we were all going, as I packed my family in the car, we were about to go. Then our pastor in Lome, Pastor Wood. He saw me. He just stopped, 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 stopped. I stopped the car. I parked. He said, Bishop is there. There is no taxi to take him to the hotel. Please, you need to take Bishop to the hotel. It was sunny. It was hot. And there was not enough taxi in Benin. I just parked. I told mommy and everybody in the car, I said, please, all of you get down. Get Get down. You don't discuss that. Just get down as you enter. Come out the same way. Praise the Lord. There are people that will say, honey, you know, this is a man. No, no, no. Get down. Get, when we get home, we can do honey. Opportunity. Say opportunity. Get down, all of you. They, they got down. Clean, clean the seat also. Then I turned. Carried Pastor Wood. Went to see Bishop Duncan William. He was sweating. And of course, the cow, the air conditioning, everything was super. As we carried him, he said we should take him to the ranch. Those of you in Benin, you know where the ranch is? Okay, none of you know where the ranch is. It was the top hotel then in Benin. And it was along Sapele Way, quite a distance. We drove there, took, took Bishop to the ranch. As we dropped him, we all uh, escorted him. We came into the sitting room. He was in a presidential suit. So he just went inside, removed his jacket. He was still, I mean, soaked. And he came out. And then he looked at Pastor Wood. He said, is this the young man that you were telling me about? He said, yes. The one that you said I gave so, so, so. He said, yes, sir. He said, the one that paid so, so, this is there. Yeah. He said, it's a young man. I'm about to bless you. I'm about to bless you. And then, as I knelt down, some of the words that Bishop Duncan William uttered that day to bless me, I still remember it. How many years ago? But there are things that happen. You see, that is why when you see Pastor Fah, don't talk anyhow. You don't know the grace upon the man. Praise the Lord. You that you just eat every day, eat, 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 eat. He said, ah, everybody can be a pastor. You go and open church. Go and open. Go and open. And so the man made some utterances and declaration that day. Hallelujah. He made some pronouncements from the realm of the spirit. Wow. I felt the power of God. There are three occasions that such things has happened to me in my life. One of them was the one Bishop Duncan William. The second one, the second one was when we went to see Papa Adeboye in his house. Very early in the morning, there were only two or three, three of us. Pastor Paul Adeboye, myself, and Osborne. We went, and he came out. And he came out from his prayer closet. He was in his prayer closet. We were there about six o'clock in the morning. 
we took books to bless him. Well, I wanted to bless him with something. So, Pastor Paul took me there with a cartons of book. And then he came out early in the morning. He began to pray, bless what a life, bless me. Praise the Lord. Timing. Timing. Sowing seed. Praise the Lord. The other one was when we went to see Archbishop Bester Dahosa before he died in Ajawa Estate. Pastor Shegu Oshen, Dr. Shegu Oshenega took us to that place. And Archbishop came out. You were there. And as we sat, he said we should place his, our hands together. Then he placed his own hand above our hand and began to pronounce blessings. Praise the Lord. I am not saying that other men of God has not blessed me, but I'm talking about the, 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 such a thing that happened at such a time. Such a time that you cannot forget it. Seed time and harvest. He says, when you have opportunity. Is that not what your Bible reads? Read verse 10 again. Again. As we have opportunity. Let us do good to all people. When is your opportunity? When there is a need. When is your opportunity? When there is a lack. When is your opportunity? When somebody is in trouble. When is your opportunity? Ah, when you hear a cry for help. Many try to run away. But that's not what the Bible says. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Especially to those who belong to the family of believers or those in the house of God. So God prioritized where you should sow your seed. He didn't say in your family. Many of you talk about your biological family and you hold them in high esteem. Even though they are armed robbers, you cover them. But in the church, you judge pastor, you judge the leaders. Even though your family members are worse crooks, but you will like, protect them and you will pay their bills. But in the house of God, you will not do anything. Where does your help come from? From your family or from God? Until you locate your place in the house of God, you are dislocated in life. Sit time and harvest. By the grace of God, I'm a man that has been blessed by sowing. I am a man that has, I have received tremendous blessings. I remember when we went to Bishop Michael Konkwo to his house. We went to bless him. All these men of God, when I went, I went to bless them. Not to, not to ask for prayer. I went to bless them. I've never run around for miracles. I've never run around for prayer. But I've run around to find a way to bless a man of God. I found a way to bless a man of God. One time I was in a flight, I noticed, I looked at Papa Adeboye also. I noticed that Papa Adeboye was seated in the business class. Ah, I looked, I said, what will I give Papa? What will I give to Daddy? Ah, I didn't have cash on me. But I had this Bible commentary, which I carried to study and all that. I had this Bible commentary, I said, if I have nothing else, I will carry what I have. And I went to him in the plane, and I knelt down. He looked at me. I said, Daddy, I just saw you, and I wanted to bless you with this. In the plane, maybe 10,000, 15,000 feet above ground. Are you hearing me? And he looked at me, and he blessed me. Other people were in the same plane. Other people saw the same Baba. Praise the Lord. But to the glory of God, in that flight, I was the only one that rushed to him. Listen, when you need blessings, there is no shame. Oh. There is nothing like, I don't want my suit to be dirty. I knelt down, I went, and I received the blessings. And so, sometimes when something is happening in my life, I don't know which blessing that is coming to hit me here and there. But I know there is always a blessing that will hit me. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what I said? I'm a man that carries multiple grace. I carry multiple grace. I carry multiple grace. By reason of sowing. By reason of what? Sowing. 
He said, as we have opportunity, do you know when the opportunity comes? Many young people don't know how to serve. That is the biggest problem. They are not trained to serve. Parents don't train their children to serve anymore. They don't know. Young men, young ladies, they don't know how to wait on table. And yet, and yet, it is in service that somebody takes notice of you. Praise the Lord. Many don't know how to serve. They don't know how to serve. They don't know how to serve. Many of you don't know how to wait on the table. Even young women, they know how to wear artificial nail, artificial eyelid, artificial hair. But they don't know how to set table. They bring food, they will mix it. They say, which one's supposed to be where? Do you understand? Seed time and harvest shall never cease. He said, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow, that he will reap. Timing is critical to your life. Timing is essential to your vision. Timing is essential to your dreams. Timing is essential to everything. Now, now, when you are late for appointment, when you are rushing for appointment, it is an indication of how late you are already in life. And then the manif outward manifestation is that you are always running to catch up appointment. You always you you hardly get to appointment, sit down, waiting for it, the time to come. No, you always said I still have two minutes. You have two minutes. You have three minutes. And so when you are getting there, you are running, running. There was, there, was, there was a lady, a lady that was a choir leader those days in Munich. So um, there was this conference we were invited. And that conference, they, really some VIP were there in Munich. And one of those that happened to be there was the consulate general in Munich for the South African embassy. And that was where I met him also, you know, and we developed a relationship. Now, while we were there, just waiting for it, I saw this person that was in God's family church before as a leader. I saw her coming for that conference. She was already late. As she jumped out of the bus, her jacket, her bag, everything, she was running, running. She was already late. I looked. Do you know what the Spirit just told me? Her life has not moved forward since. Because those were the discipline I tried to teach her. Listen, you run away from discipline. It will meet up with you. It will meet up with you. It will catch up with you. Take note. Success does not come to people that are not disciplined. You will squander it. So, when we talk about timing and discipline, they work together. As you have opportunity. Do you have a mentor? Do you have a mentor? In this place, people will tell pastor they will want to see pastor. Appointment will be given to them. They will not show up. They will not even call. And they will ask pastor Isaac, did they call? He said, no. I will laugh. I will laugh. You know why? Because they lack value for the things of the spirit. If you miss the time of sowing, you will also miss the time of harvest. And there are many lives without harvest. Why? They have not planted. Nobody tells you that the time of planting will be easy. Nobody says it will be easy. The time of sowing, nobody says it will be easy. It is hard. Go and ask farmers. They will tell you that to plant is hard work. Sometimes under the sun, Sometimes under the rain. Sometimes as they're on their way to farm, the rain will dredge upon them. Do they turn back? They don't turn back. Sometimes when they have proposed to go to farm, and they, you know, there's this rain they call lazy rain. In the morning, it will start drizzling. You say it will soon stop, right? And then two hours, it's still drizzling. And you are happy that it's raining. Mama will not go to farm today. 
A mama has set everything to go to farm. After two, three hours, he's still dressing. Mama will just call you. Obina! Uh, Obina, come, this rain, we can't wait for it again. <laughs> he said, Mama, it's still raining. He said, Don't worry, it will stop while we're on the way. Is that not true? Do, I'm not talking about digital babies. I'm talking about analog babies. Those that were born. Uh, those that were born. Some even were born in the farm. Is it not true? Some were born in the farm. Why? Because a pregnant woman refused to stay at home lazily. Through of us. They gave birth in the farm. And then people rushed together and helped her, and the child was delivered. So the child came to farm from the first day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So if your name ends with okra or yam, or baby, it reminds you what your mama was planting when you came forth. Praise the Lord. If you see yam in your name, or corn in your name, it doesn't matter what they added and added. They say, Olua Yam. Olua Khan. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It reminds the mother what she was doing when you came. And you thought it was a nickname. No. It was where you dropped from. Amen. And now you just cloud alone, you say, ah, Pastor will understand, it's going to rain. You, <laughs> you say, it is going to rain. And so you went back and you folded. And then you didn't go to church and it didn't rain. And Pastor asked, why didn't you come to church? He said, the weather. You can't say it didn't rain. You say it was the weather. But it didn't rain around church. I said, Pastor, you know this Lagos rain. Praise the Lord. As we have opportunity. If you fail to sow, you will fail to reap. Until you sow, you will not reap. It may not be easy to sow. It may, you know, in the vehicle, you see somebody that doesn't have transport. You see somebody you can help. Pay their transport. Pay their transport. And then after, you can minister Jesus to them. You can come down at the same bus stop and pay. And then from there, you minister Christ to them. There was, there was this uh, joke they sent. At the, it was a comedy also. This lady was singing, uh, um, was singing some Christian song or another. And then in her bag, she brought out fish. People were in the vehicle and she ate. She brought out uh, buns and she ate. And she brought uh, so many things I ate. And then I said, and they put in the back we were looking, you know. <clears throat> and then after that, she said, um, brothers and sisters, I want to speak to you about Jesus. They said, we don't, we don't want to hear. We don't want to hear. We don't want to hear. Praise the Lord. We don't want to hear. Keep your Jesus. You ate your fish. You ate your bones. You ate your chicken. Now you want to share Jesus with us. Why didn't you share other things with us? Praise the Lord. Say seed time. Seed time is important in my life. It's important in my destiny. You need to have people that give thanks for your life every day because of your good works. Because of your good works. Praise the Lord. My desire is that this church will always be a light in this community. Amen. That we will have good works in this community. Amen. I was talking to a bishop, a man of God, yesterday. We were just starting. Was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? Yesterday. He said that he noticed in the last three weeks that the light has changed in this community. In the last three weeks plus. He said he noticed. I said, yeah, he noticed because we, we step in. Praise the Lord. They said, what do you mean? I said, um, we are somehow paying for it. Amen? That's the truth. 
So because of us, everybody enjoy it. Because of us, everybody enjoy it. The line is supposed to come 4.30 today. It came a bit earlier, and then it went up because there was a problem in their switchover. Why do I know it? Because they give me a report. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Before, was it my business? If Nepa goes, now, <laughs> praise the Lord. I can call, but I say, why is the power off? <laughs> they say I should give them 10, 15 minutes. There was a technical issue. They will resolve it. And I can tell you when it will be off tonight. Praise the Lord. No, I'm, I am telling you that I'm not saying God told me. Amen. Today, tomorrow, Sunday, I can tell you the exact time the light will come on and go off. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Because it is a good thing to have light. It is a good thing. I said, I will tell mommy, I will tell the children, I said, the light will go off so 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 time. Go and do what you need to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, we are the light. We have the opportunity to do good in this community. And so, there is nobody I approach to speak to Jesus about in this community that will not listen to me. Because of good works. Because of good works. Because of good works. Your good works makes a way for you. A man's gift makes a way for him. And he will not stand before mean ordinary people. He will stand before great men. Your gift brings you before great men. All the men of God I have met in my life was as a result of a seed in my hand. Praise the Lord. I never met Pastor Chris before. I never tried to meet him. What was I doing? I was sending books to Reverend Tom in Benin. I said, this is for Pastor Chris. Reverend Tom from Benin will send it to Pastor Chris. Praise the Lord. He will send it. And then after, Pastor asked him, why is it that the company is in Lagos? Why does it have to come from Benin to you, to me? He said, because he's my friend. He said, but he can send to me directly. Praise the Lord. And so, I started packaging to send to Pastor Chris. And then in a conference, pastor's conference in Benin, Pastor Chris invited me. A man's gift brings you before great men. If you take time to sow, sow to be a blessing, not sowing because of what you will get. Many people don't get back because their mind is on receiving. But you should sow to do good work in the name of Jesus. Because who you sow to may not be the source to bless you. God has diversity of ways. God has manifold ways to bless you. God can use somebody you have never met to repay you for all the work you have done. The problem is that as you are saying, you are waiting. Uh, uh, hurry now. Hurry. And so, the prosperity of the Christian does not depend on his prayer. The prosperity of the Christian does not depend on fasting. You know why? Because unbelievers, they don't pray and fast and yet they prosper. But unbelievers, many of them are great givers. Look at Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. Look at Warren Buffett. Look at Jeff Bezos. These are not Christians, but they are great givers. Well, I don't know about Warren Buffett. But they are great givers. The time they are giving to accelerate their progress. You, what can you give? You can live every day to evangelize and say, I must win soul for God. Like illiterate parents, you can say, I must win doctors, engineers in the house of God. Businessmen, I must win them. Workers, I must bring them. You say, between now and the end of the year, six months, Lord, I want to bring 60 people into your house. Give me that grace. And you spend your time praying. 
You spend your time preparing. When you are going for evangelism, you go as if you are going for very important appointment. You said, I am on the service of the Lord today. I am going for the Lord's work. You go out majestically. When you step in, they will think that you are looking for a job. You say, no, no, no. I'm looking for the MD. Any appointment? No. Any problem? No. Is there any reason? Yes. What is the reason? I have a message from him. I have a message for him. You have a message for a director. God has gone ahead of you. They will go and tell the director, somebody is here to see you. We've never seen him before or seen her before. But he said or she said she has a message for you. A message from me. From where? We don't know. He is, or she is demanding to see you only. He is demanding to see you only. Okay. The message. Bring him in. Bring him in. Young man, do I know you? Sir, you may not know me, but you do know me. What are you talking about? God has sent me to share the good news with you. The good news that Jesus loves you. The good news that Jesus is alive. The good news is that the word of God is ever alive. If you receive the word. And the person may already be a Christian and he will marvel at your boldness. He says, I like your faith. You know what? I have my church, but one day I will visit. But nevertheless, see my card. When you have program, invite me. Did you lose? We didn't lose. We didn't lose. Such a boldness of faith is what it's called. Such boldness of faith. I don't think I've ever met anybody I didn't talk to about Jesus. You know, if we spend 10 minutes to talk about it, we'll talk to you about Jesus. The day I met with Mr. Obi and we were talking in Qatar, it wasn't up to 10 minutes I told him about Jesus. The same thing we just right. Doesn't take me long because that's who I am. I am in Christ. Every opportunity I'm talking to you, I will tell you about Christ. That is it. That is it. If I have five minutes to talk with you, you will hear Christ from me. Praise the Lord. The day engineer Fila came to see me, he didn't come to see me because of evangelism. The first time I met him, he's here asking. The day engineer Jafaru came to see me. He didn't come to see me. He came to me as a Muslim. By the time I finished, he left as a Christian. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> engineer Felaon was even worse. He was planning to leave Lagos. He was on the verge of running from Lagos. In a dream, the Lord told him, go and see your pastor. He didn't have one. In the dream, he saw me. The Lord said, go and see your pastor. I wasn't his pastor there, no, but the Lord told him. That is why if he wants to run away from me, he can't. And he has tried sometimes when he wanted to run away. After he will confess. Praise the Lord. He is here. All of you are looking at him. Look at him. My friend, stand up. Let them see you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You have opportunity the day you meet somebody to share Christ with them. And that is why your conduct with before that person is important. You are be if you know that you are Christ on the move, anybody you talk to, you be careful. If you know that you are carrying Christ, listen, if you carry egg, do you drive anyhow? Why? No, why? Are you not in the car? Why are you driving so carefully when you carry 20 crates of egg in the car? Why? Sorry? Because your content you are carrying is fragile. Are you hearing me? What you carry is what? Fragile. But Christ is more fragile than the egg. There is a time, there is a season, there is an appointment for you to sow. Because seed time determines your harvest. You know, we are realizing everything. Realizing everything. 
Lord, bless me. Lord, give me that. Lord, give me that. Lord, give me that. And the Lord will look and say, what did he sow? What did he sow? What did you plant? What did you plant? God will not break his law because of you. God will not break his word because of you. You come to church, you leave and all that. Listen, listen. As a young Christian those days, when pastor sent for us, we are full of joy. It's like God has sent for us. In those days, when pastors come to stay in our house, because many of them, when they are traveling through, they will stay with my uncle and others, so we'll be happy to host them and all that. It's like Jesus has come into the house. The way they are treated, the way they are, they are cared for and all that. Ah, pastors, men of God. Ah. Even, even cars have service history. Young people do not have service history. You don't have service history. Go and read the book. Service, your pathway to define health. Many of you, you don't even, you, it's there. You can have it for free. But you cannot read it. Even the testimony of pastor is there. You can read it. You can read it. Read it and learn the way to make progress. See, see, success is not a destination. Success is a journey. All these people say, I have arrived. There is no arrival with success. Success is a journey. Timing your success means to time your journey. Shout hallelujah. Timing is everything. Health and time, they are the raw materials of life. They are the raw materials. And when you waste time, and when you waste your health, what are you doing? You are wounding. Ah, 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 ah. You are wounding your body for your success. Because whatever you waste, you cannot recoup. I will, I will, I will, I will. That's all you said. I am going to do this. I am going to do this. I am going to do this. You think that procrastination and laziness is equal to patience. You say, I'm taking my time. The Bible says you have need for patience. You procrastinate. You lazy about. Get up and move. Timing is everything. Timing is essential. I cannot say it enough. How can you get up in the morning? You are washing clothes from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Are you a dry cleaning business? You wash... You wash 10 clothes, you walk her. You go and rest. Then after that, you come again. Anybody that calls you, you are washing clothes. Anybody that calls you, are washing clothes. From 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You say you washed all day. Then after you finish 4 p.m., then you need a rest. So what did you do all day? You washed clothes. What did you do in the night? I was packing the clothes I washed in the day. Are you serious with your life? You spent a whole day washing how many clothes? 20 pieces of clothes. And then, the clothes you wore, the clothes you wore, when you finish washing, ah, 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 Hello? Hello? You squander the whole day. Praise the Lord. People that are into fashion designing, they sew clothes. They keep collecting clothes, collecting, collecting, collecting until they are confused. They don't know who owes what again. Praise the Lord. When customers come, what color is that? What color is that you are clothed again? And then the person say, eh, blue with black with gold. Eh? <laughs> Start digging. Tell me when you see it. Not even when you see it. Tell me when you see it. My cloth is not there. Ah. Ah. 
Where will it be? You went to another heap and you are a Christian. Ah, it's not there. Ah, let it not be of use for another person who. Please come back tomorrow. The person said, Where is my clothes? And so you kill your business because you are timeless. Your customers are angry. They are dissatisfied. And you don't care. I said, that woman, the trouble too much, John. How much is it she paid me? You are getting it wrong. The person that gave you 5,000 Naira business has the potential for 50,000 Naira business. But you squandered the opportunity. Like Jerusalem. Jerusalem missed the time of her visitation. You missed it. You missed it. And so you are praying in church. When we are praying, bring your business material. Let's pray. You carry your business register. You, cl- you carry samples of cloth of customers that are angry with you. You bring it before God. And you don't know that's a judgment. Those clothes supposed to be sewn three months ago. You are still telling them, come tomorrow. You become a police station. Come tomorrow. Come tomorrow. Why don't you take five? Another person come. No, ma. I am fool. Come next week. Let me finish these five. Then you take your time, finish the five. And then you return it. Then you open again to take. You take another five. You close your gate. And then when they talk about you, you say, that person, very, very sincere. Very on time. Doesn't play games. If he says, or if she says, come tomorrow, come tomorrow, your clothes will be ready. And so when we pray for your business, it will prosper. How can your business prosper when you are doing it with a lie? The Bible says God is not mocked. God is not mocked. You said to customers that you open 9 o'clock. They came 9.30, you were not there. No sign. They came 10 o'clock, you were not there. Quarter after 10. Eventually, you came 11 (laughs) o'clock. Madam, I've been here twice, so no vex. No vex. No vex. Not the children. Not the children. Not the children. No vex. What is it that you want even? Not the children. Did you hear yourself? Not the children. Are the children the owner of the business? I will not come there again. Didn't you know you have children before you started the business? And then, you didn't even accept the reason. You blame it on the children. Do you know that timeless people always blame it on others? It's not me, it's traffic. It's traffic. Didn't other people go on the same road and made it on time to the appointed appointment? It's not me, it's not me, it's Nepal. I didn't have light to iron my clothes. Excuse me? Excuse me? It is not the devil that is killing your business. It is your lawless nature that is killing your business. If you say you open 9 o'clock, quarter to 9, half, in fact, 8.30, be in your place of business. Are you hearing me? Be open 8.30. What do you do before 9 o'clock? Reborosonda la braketo yebala. Era baye ke to le broson de le baya male broson de le brale ra baye ke ke to le broson da la bale era bo le brose te ye bala kakato my father in heaven i have opened my business today in the name of jesus i am deploying ministering spirits round about this place let there be a difference between my business and their business because i serve the lord lord make a difference today let all the customers come to my shop. Lord, let my business be open in heaven. Let it be open on earth. And let grace rest upon this place. Let there be a rushing in of customers. And Lord, I thank you for today. I give you praise. I give you glory. While you are still praying, 10 minutes to now, people are lining up because angels were deployed. Immediately you prayed it. And they are waiting for you. And when you finish praying, they say, ah, Madam, I like that you are praying. Which church? Without opening your mouth for evangelism, the way of business have shown interest. Do you understand? You have two of your children in the shop. They are so arrogant because you didn't train them well. 
They see customers. They are chewing gums. What do you want? Uh, I want, uh, what do you put called tomatoes? Uh, tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes, how many? They are chewing. That's the way they are talking to customers. And you are there. You are there. Listen, when a believer raises lawless children, you'll be ashamed. you should be ashamed. Because they are a reflection of you. No, do you understand what I'm talking about? When a believer raises lawless children, you should be ashamed. Because the time of discipline, you missed it. The time of discipline, you missed it. For everything under heaven, there is a time. When Jesus was about to leave, the disciples asked them one question that even Jesus had to rebuke them. He said, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus was shocked because all the while Jesus was them, he has been teaching them about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. And now, what were they asking for? The kingdom of the world. And Jesus said, it is not your business. It is not your business to know the time and the season the Father has put in his authority. Praise the Lord. What is your plan? What is your plan? At the end of this seminar, you must, you must recover your dreams. You must recover your goal in life. Praise the Lord. It's not too late for you to produce a pastor. For you to produce an apostle. To produce an evangelist. They don't have to be your own children for you to raise them. You can take interest in one and bring that person up as a, an apostle. The person that brought Bishop Oedipo to where he is, is not the parents. He's an American woman. Now, are you hearing me? And Bishop Oedipo talked about her as the passionate mother. The day he, she died, a few years ago, Papa wept. He wept. But many of you are so selfish. This is my child. This is not my child. This is my child. This is my child. And so you end up, the seed you sow in others is what your child will inherit. The reason why that your children are the way they are, even with all your effort around, is because to other people's children, you've been a Jezebel. And God said, you have done this to the fatherless. Let me see what become of your children. I am the Lord. I am the father of the fatherless. I will judge. And so your children struggle. They struggle to be better. They can't be better. You know why? Because what is holding them is not the devil. You take them for deliverance. They somersaulted and all that. Nothing changed. Because you know what? Devil did a show for you. And there was no problem with them. You know why? The Bible said God resists the proud. And gives grace to the humble. And if God resists you, who can remove the leg of God? No, who can remove the head? When God places his le leg on your neck. Until you come before the Lord. And ask for mercy. These three days, you can restore things in your life. You can regain your dream. You can reset your goals. You can change the way you have. You can look at the last two years, three years. What have I planted? What have I sown? Ah, I have been a terrible farmer. I have planted nothing. I have planted nothing. I have planted nothing. And so what do you do? Jesus. Jesus, help me. From today, I am about to change. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Whatever a man sow, that he will reap. God is not mocked. If you sow to your flesh, corruption, to the spirit, eternal life. What are you sowing? As we have opportunity, as we have opportunity, let us do good. Praise the Lord. You can be late in life. You can be late in life. You can be late in life. You talk to your children. 
Pastor Chris told the man, a pastor went to visit. And then, uh, and then somebody knocked on the door. And then he told the son, go and open the door. The son said, dad, go and open it yourself, I'm busy. The father got up to go and open it by himself. And he was sitting with somebody. And the person said to him, if that is my son, by the time I finish with him, he will be in the door opening business for the rest of his life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You should train your children in the way that they can't talk back to you. They can't talk back to you. You tell your son, sit down. He said, Daddy, I'm going somewhere. He said, but I said, sit down. He said, Dad, I don't have time. And he's going. He said, but anyway, come back, late. come back early. He said, Dad, whatever. <laughs> Hello? He said, whatever, whatever, Dad. And then he, he said, Dad, don't wait up on me. Praise the Lord. There is a time for discipline. And unfortunately, the time of discipline never ceases. Hello? None of my children will be above discipline. Ask those that are here. Praise the Lord. No, ask those that are, I have different koboko for different offenses. Hello? Praise the Lord. And there are those that evade me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There are those that evade me, but the day I will catch up with you, there will be a report card. Because you can only evade me for a short time. Can a man evade from God? The fact that you are avoiding me means that I need to catch you. Praise the Lord. Whatever you give birth to, either spiritually or physically, should never overgrow your discipline. Never. That is the Lord of God, not man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whatever you give birth to, either spiritually or physically, should never overgrow your discipline. I, I, I was in Abuja church, Christ Embassy, to see the pastor. And then after service, as I was going to see the pastor, I was waiting. I saw businessmen in suit, where to do guys. They were kneeling down because of their offenses. You see them, they were wearing designer suits. They were kneeling down for, their, for what, what they did. That's the right way. And you here, you are wearing slippers. Somebody told you to need that, you are saying, me. Me. Ah, is it because we are in the house of God? Me, where you are wearing slippers. That is why you don't have shoe. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So you know, I am a graduate. I am a graduate. A graduate. When did you graduate? Five years ago. Where did you graduate from? University of Abia. 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 Or Sokoto. How come you graduated in those places? Because you scored 120. And that's only where they can take you with management. Praise the Lord. And you are making mouth. Instead of you to keep quiet, behave like if you didn't go to school. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Timing is everything. Time yourself to succeed. God didn't create any of his children to be poor. But the children recreated themselves to poverty. 
And this message is to bring you out of it. Your time of prosperity is now. And all you need to do is to fix the time of your life. Tell yourself, in the next one year, in the next one year, there will be a transition. A few months ago, I said in the next 10 years, in the next 10 years, was it 20 people I said? I said, we're going to have 20 people, graduate, working in different countries of the world. In the next 10 years, we're going to have 20 people working across the globe. Doctors, engineers, nurses, and all that. I said it a few months ago. And then it is a goal that I have set that in the next 20 years, we're going to have people all over the world doing one thing or the other for the Lord while they are doing their business or working. But what, does, what do we need? We need people with the brain to carry it. Not those that after calling results, they said, okay, uh, this person, uh, 49 and a half, pass. Shout hallelujah. He said, he said, God doesn't use, he said, after Abraham did not go to school. You read your Bible to a point, you read only that Esau, Isaac, Jacob, they didn't go to school. That's what he read. And you forgot that Joseph went to school. You forgot that Moses went to school. You re we read, Peter was, Peter was a fisherman, he was the head of the apostles. You didn't read about Paul. And so you are selective even in the scriptures. You look for people like you in the Bible. <laughs> Continue. You will also find Jezebel. Continue. Praise the Lord. You will also find Goliath. Continue. Say, I must make it. Say, I must make it. I will not be a reproach to the name of God. Therefore, in his name, I must make it. I must be a success. Shout hallelujah. Rise on your feet. You know, when you serve God, God gives you a pedestal where you can stand. When any man serves God, God makes you. Ah, follow me and I will make you. Of all those we graduated from school, whether it was in the secondary school or in the university in the UK, of all those that we graduated from, there is none of them that's doing better than me that are doing legitimate business. I can say it proudly. Are you hearing me? Not one of them. Because when we were doing Christian books, they were mocking me that they had them selling books and papers. The road was are doing containers of clothes and containers of testa. They were mocking my sister that your brother is doing papers and uh, test book and all that. Where are they today? None of them can stand and talk to me anyhow. You know why? God never fails. I will continue to sow my way in God so that my harvest will always be preserved. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you hear what I said? I will continue to sow my way in God. So that my harvest will never be stopped by any man. By any man. When you sow to man, man can stop your harvest. But when you sow to the almighty, your harvest is unstoppable. May that be your experience. Amen. Lift up your hand. Say, Lord. May your time be activated in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Every time that I have lost, every time that I've wasted, Lord, I'm asking for mercy. I need speed to recover. This weekend, Lord, give me the grace. Give me the speed to recover my wasted years from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father. I give you the glory. I give you all the honor. Shout hallelujah.
Shout hallelujah. Father, thank you for your people. As we have begun this seminar, you will take us to the end. And Lord, everyone that will seek your face concerning a recovery and a restoration, may they not be disappointed. And Lord, whatever that has been wasted, let there be a renewal. And Lord, at the end of this weekend, let your people have a reason to thank you and to glorify your name. In Jesus' precious name, I bless you. I bless your expectation. Your dream will come alive. Your goals will come alive. Your expectation will come alive. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir. Grace for performance shall come upon you. Grace for performance shall come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your people. As you go, the presence of the Lord will go with you. And we stay with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And God's people say, Let us share the grace together in unity. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy are flowing us all the days of our lives. Tomorrow's meeting is also what? 5.30. And Sunday is also 5.30. Please, don't attend one and skip the other. There are phases of teaching for all this. Please, attend all so that you will get all. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name.